This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and fudge. Only I didn't say fudge. <laughs> I was like, it is a big deal. I'm a sinner. Have a honky chonky Christmas. <laughs> it's the fat time of the year. I mean, I guess it could help preserve the carcass <laughs> until <laughs> I could bury it. IFAF. Idaho Falls infotainment talk show with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Guess what we forgot to do last episode? What? Turn on the light. Oh, no. <laughs> we forgot to turn on our fake neon sign. So unprofessional. So now it's on. Yeah. We <laughs> add that to the checklist, I uh -huh. guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. We need a person who does that for us. Right, right. Man, that'd yeah, be nice. Yeah. We got a lot of stuff for them to do. We need a producer and a fact checker mm -hmm. and an editor. Oh, yeah. I think first and foremost, editor, because yeah. I'd actually like to spend a little time with you. Yeah, that's all I do these days. Real estate <laughs> and editing. What are you doing tonight? Editing. What are you doing tomorrow? Real estate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, and a quick plug for last episode. Because episode 21, because uh, we think it may have gotten nerfed because of the content. Right. Now, I want to tell you what the last episode is about, but I don't want the words, because if I say the words again, we might get nerfed again. Right. So I'll say, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to elongate the words and then bleep them in the middle, and hopefully you can figure it out like that. Yeah. Here we go. Gay. Gay. Hackers. There we go. Maybe even if we said it with a funny accent, Gee Fury Heekers. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, that's great. Fury Gay Gee Fury Heekers. I think it's our <laughs> best episode to date. But, oh yeah. But it did get nerfed. Yeah. And that's a bummer. Well, and I feel and like maybe we really, we've learned a lesson. Yeah, well, and I feel like we really shown in it, too. Before we get going, um, you look lovely this evening. Thank you. Yeah. I was at my company Christmas party. It was Great Gatsby themed, and it was a murder mystery party. Okay. Which that's, is so up my alley. The, I was almost <laughs> afraid to ask because uh, you're sort of in Christmassy colors if Christmassy colors were blue and silver, and sometimes they are. Right, yeah. You've got Technically, the, that's Hanukkah colors. Show off your gloves. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Hanukkah or winter themed mm -hmm. color. Yeah. yeah. And in fact, Hanukkah is going on right now, right? We're in it. Right I think now. you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But you've got a, a lovely blue dress, some pearls mm -hmm. and some gloves that match. And a little bit of fur. That's right. Yeah. Do you have the boots with the fur? No. I don't. I don't. I've got a coat with the fur. But is that the headband you referenced last episode that matches your muff? Yes, it is, as a matter okay. of fact. You know what? Should I grab the muff? You want to? I should, I think. Yeah. Why don't yeah. you... Proof that Carly has a muff. I'll cover That's for funny. you, and then you can um, show everybody your muff. Maybe that's why we got nerfed last episode. A lot of jokes like that. We tend to do that here. You know what, though? We are listened to by ministers, by men and women of the cloth. Look at the... Okay. Look at this lovely muff. Isn't this Would a lovely furry muff? <laughs> it really is. Yeah. And you're right. It does match the headband. It's, yeah. You could say the curtains match the, the drapes. You could say that. <laughs> and we're <laughs> off, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I would also like to point out that you could fit a lot in that muff. You sure can. Because not only does it have a little place for your hands, uh -huh. it actually also has a little purse. Yes. Isn't that cool? You and I got this thing. I kid you not. For $12 at a thrift store. What an amazing find. I know. You could fit a full-sized grilled cheese from Man Wearing Cheese and Gelato. Well, I know I could because I did. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. But man, I wish I would have. But also, we were on the front row, so we would have been caught so fast. Yeah. yeah. At the very least, I would have seen one of the actors cracking up. Probably you because you would have known what I was doing. Yep. But yeah. Doing the grilled cheese in the muff. <laughs> Uh huh. Like we discussed. If, if you're missing all this, uh, just again a plug for episode 21. It was pretty great. And so yeah. I just tried to match. I'm wearing a a blue Tommy blazer mm -hmm. with a uh, oh. a nice Teton tee. I see. Yes. It, now it's not available at TetonT-shirts.com. Sometimes Mikey just makes tees for himself. Do you remember the Rage mm -hmm. comics from like oh yeah 08, 09, uh huh, maybe 2010? It's the um. It's the, the F uh, yeah guy. Yeah, it's the F yeah guy. Only it says I F A F yeah. Yeah. All right. Which is funny. And also, <laughs> maybe if enough people leave comments saying that they want that particular shirt, 
You'll be nice and you'll leave it there. And I and I want to thank, yeah, I want to thank Kim and Whitney both who scored t-shirts from Teton T-shirts.com this past week. Yeah, how cool is so that? So cool. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate mm-hmm. that. And and we'd love to see your photos. Yeah, for our Insta. Yeah, so that we can throw them on there. That'd be fantastic. Thank mm-hmm. you very much. Okay, great. Before we get started on anything else, right to jail. Oh no, what did we do? <laughs> Remember that guy from Parks and Rec? He's played by, I forget the guy on Saturday Night Live who plays it, but he's like the undercooked fish, right to jail. He's like from Venezuela or something. Oh, Overcooked oh. chicken, believe it or not, right to jail. I do know the guy. I don't know his name, but I know his face. We're going to go right to jail on this mm-hmm. one, if you've seen that meme, um, and even if you haven't. Because a few, several episodes ago, I mentioned that I had been in the slammer once in my life. Yes! Our buddy from Rhode Island, More Buff, More Muff, commented, Mike, I knew you were a real one. <laughs> it's your time, buddy. <laughs> what did you do time for? I said, I'll tell the story, story someday. Well, someday has arrived. Merry Christmas to you, More Muff. <laughs> more Buff. Whatever. This might dredge up some childhood trauma of mine, but I'm going to go ahead and tell it to you anyway. Mm-hmm. This happened when I was a minor. So I was uh, 17 at the time. Mm. And I... Well, I, I'm not going to say I was a troubled child, Carly, but I did go to a parochial school as mm-hmm. a child. That's a church school. Yeah. I got a great education, but I learned zero social skills. Right. I'm great. I wouldn't change a thing about my past because it's made me the person I am today, and I like me. I like you too. I think I'm okay. Yeah. But... <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I did have a hard time sort of going from a class of eight people to a school with 800 people in mm-hmm. it. And so I got kicked out of public school and sent back to private school. Really? What did yeah. you get kicked out for? Fighting. Oh, yeah. That doesn't surprise me. I got bullied. Mm-hmm. And then I got bullied again. I got bullied a third time. And I finally fought back. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't know what else to do. Parents try to give advice like, um, oh, just ignore the bully and he'll go away. Make it seem like what they're saying isn't important to you and then they'll stop doing it. They didn't stop doing it. No, and they don't. Kids don't work that way. are ruthless and relentless. Mm -hmm. So finally, I spoke to him in the only language he could understand. Mm -hmm. Gave him a knuckle sandwich. (laughs) Whatever. Right. So my parents were like, okay, yikes, let's put him back in. Private school, essentially, is what it was. Mm -hmm. It's one here in town. You can go, you can drive by it on West Broadway right before Bellin if you're heading west, Gethsemane, which, as I understand, some parents back in the day called Get Some Money because it was so expensive. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds about right. (laughs) I I actually revisited with an old school buddy last Mm -hmm. summer. We met their new pastor. I believe his name is Jason Bell. Really nice friendly, warm, welcoming guy. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's, you know, there's no, all that's in the past. Mm -hmm. But I think when I went back to parochial school, church school, private school, I did have a little chip on my shoulder at that point. Mm -hmm. You know, I I don't think, I don't shy away from conflict, but when it presents itself, you know, I'll meet it head on. Right. And not violently. You just don't beat around the bush. Right. yeah. Yeah. You know, it's sort of like you and I have, uh, people have commented on um, some of our shows saying he's off putting. Mm-hmm. And what they don't realize is you and I are both blunt objects. Oh, yeah. We speak at the speed of reality. Yes, I agree. And sometimes when people who have feelings wonder if we're hurting the other person's or disregarding the other person's feelings, boy, we're way off in the weeds here. <laughs> Let me reel it back in. So I go back to parochial school, may have had a chip on my shoulder, and some teacher said something I didn't like, and I said something back that was bad enough to have a come to Jesus meeting, uh-huh. <laughs> perhaps literally. Funny. And, and the school said, hey, look, Mike, we'll let you finish out this school year, but you got to do it at home. Really? And I said, okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that kind of sounds awesome to me. Right? Yeah. Oh, what punishment? <laughs> there was like a couple months left. Yeah. It's like eight weeks left. Yeah. So I went and did all the work and took all the tests in like eight days. Because of course you did. Yeah. And, and so my parents were like, well, okay, but you have to stay in your room 
for the entire time that you would have, you would normally be at school. Right. They're trying to punish you. Right. I get yeah. it. And, and that's cool. I mean, it makes sense in the long run because, yeah, you did do something wrong. You do need to face consequences. But it also sounds like there were some issues that weren't actually addressed by the adults who were supposed to. Right. Okay. One day, two or three weeks in, I was calling to my mom for a, uh, a glass of water. Mm-hmm. And um, the, the the for whatever reason, the bathroom sink water wasn't as good as the kitchen water. Uh-huh. Like it was noticeably. Ugh. You weren't even allowed to go get water. I wasn't allowed. I was allowed to. I had an, a bathroom adjacent to my bedroom. Okay. But I wasn't allowed to go upstairs to the kitchen. That seems dumb. Well, kind of. What if you just wanted a little snack? That was their rules. Whatever. It was pretty strict. And I've since talked to a few kids. Mm-hmm. We all went there. Somebody should write a book about it. Yeah. And um, it, it was pretty strict. It was, yeah. they were stricter than they needed to be. So, <laughs> mom, mom, my mom was on the phone, I guess. Now, I always made the joke in my mind. I don't think I ever told her, when you die, I'm going to picture you on the phone. <laughs> you know? Right. That's yeah, going to be. I think you've mentioned before that she was just always on the phone. That should be the photo at her wake <laughs> is her on the phone. <laughs> well, she's dead. Oof. And I still picture her on the phone. In fact, she's she a died lady. almost exactly two years ago, uh, mm-hmm. December 10th, 2021. And rest in peace, mom. I love you. And we, and we also talked at the speed of reality, her yeah. and I. It was great. I, I loved and still love my mom. Yeah. Okay. Go upstairs for a glass of water because I'm like, screw this, man. I'm just going to get the job done. Went up there. She's on the phone. Hey, I thought you were supposed to be in your room. I'm like, well, fudge, mom. Only. Only I didn't say fudge. <laughs> Isn't that a Christmas movie quote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said the word. The uh-huh. big one, the queen mother, the F dash 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 word. Oh, no. And Mike, go to your room. So I went back to my room. Did you get your water at least? I did. <laughs> I did. Good. I did. It was great water. <laughs> we do have fantastic water here in Idaho Falls. Yes, we really do. I think Iona's got the best I was going to say, not quite as good as Iona, but pretty good. Where you grew up. Yeah. Certainly better than LA water. Well, my parents had another <laughs> come to Jesus meeting that night. And uh, I was invited and Mm -hmm. (laughs) they decide, apparently I, maybe I had more of a chip on my shoulder than I thought I did. They, or they were stricter than they should have been. Right. I'm not sure even to this day. So they decided to invite a police officer over to the home and press charges. You might be thinking, what charges? Right. Apparently Carly, at that point in time, it was a misdemeanor to use foul or obscene language in front of women and children. Well, you know, because if you do, our uteruses will fall out of our bodies and we'll die. Think of the women and children, won't you? Yeah. So long story short, too late. <laughs> right. I, I went to court. They made me take some sort of a test to determine, you know, whether I was psychotic or not. Whoa. This, this is really silly because I, I know a lot of people know me and go, you got to be kidding me, Mike. I know a lot of people haven't heard this story. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I gave smart ass answers <laughs> on the test. Of course, you did. You know. Yeah, that sounds like you. Because you know what's what's the um, you know nothing will break me quote that my son actually has it tattooed on his back. But I was like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this. Right. I'm gonna be me. Yeah. You know. So I sat in front of the judge at sentencing for this sham trial. And she said, Mike, the world hates a smart ass. Now think about the world we live in today. Who's running it? Smart asses. N- All smart asses. Right. Nobody is not a smart ass. Well, and realistically, you watch at the end of the day, to sitcoms. Be- yeah. Well, and to be a smart ass, you have to have wit. And I'm sure that throwing out the F-bomb is not uh, necessarily witty, but uh, you have to have a little more content than that. But right. sometimes it helps. Right. Sometimes it just f- 
fucking helps. <laughs> it does. It does. You know, I really believe that diction is an important thing. And sometimes there are words that cannot convey the idea better than cuss words. Now, I, I taught my son, listen, be careful what language you use in life because people might make assumptions about your intelligence. Right. But I know plenty of people who use naughty words. Mm-hmm. Um, who are smart. You know, I actually read a study once, if I'm remembering it correctly, that basically said that people who tend to cuss more often also tend to be more intelligent. I've seen that too, and I don't know what to make of it, because yeah. I also know plenty of intelligent people who choose not to. Right. That said, I was thrown in the slammer for, <laughs> um, they're right there at the Bonneville County Courthouse, kids. Yeah. Uh, and ironically, this was... Three months before Idaho passed a no minors in jail for misdemeanors law. Ugh, so you just missed it by a hair. Again, <laughs> I like myself now. I don't regret any of my past. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think maybe that scared, scared me straight a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I remember going into jail. You know, they strip you, strip your identity. And um, you're wearing orange Robert Downey Jr. Uh -huh. courtroom <laughs> What, uh, like, what do the nurses wear? Uh, oh, scrubs. Scrubs. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Orange scrubs. Mm hmm And I'm in there with three other dudes, all about my age. Uh-huh. And I'm like, so what do you guys do here in prison? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> they, I didn't understand the distinction between jail and prison. In fact, we still don't because we were talking about Christopher Tapp a couple of weeks ago, rest in peace. Uh-huh. And I called it jail when, in fact, he was, was in prison. Yeah, prison. So I still get them mixed up. It just happens. Thank and goodness. It, yeah. Thank goodness I don't know those distinctions. Right. Right. But I think the moral of the story is, and that's how I got to where I am today. Right. Being a smartass. You know, I cussed at my mom once. You did. It ended up so differently than yours. Okay, I, I want to hear this, <clears throat> but I want to say real quick mm -hmm. that I think. Maybe that was a good thing that I was thrown in jail for. Oh, yeah. It was three days over Fourth of July weekend. Oh. So you missed the fireworks? I missed the, yeah, I missed the oh, fireworks. That, that's a bunch of crap. They weren't as cool as they are now, nowadays. Right. right. Um, but um, there aren't very pleasant individuals there. That's shocking. And I like, would have never guessed. You smell poop. All the time. Ew. Because somebody's always going. Oh. And you're in a, you know, there's no doors on the bathroom. Right. You're trying to sleep, you smell poop. Yeah. You're trying to eat, you smell poop. It's just yeah, gross. Yeah, that is gross. It's really gross. Yeah. You got to shower with other dudes. Yeah, that sounds <laughs> unpleasant. It was just unpleasant. Yeah. See, at least if I went to jail, I'd be fine because girls don't poop. <laughs> 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 Kidding. So more buff, more muff. There you go. I told you it was going to be lame. <laughs> Super lame. Like really lame. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, and I guess the official charge was, in case anybody wants to call me out on this, the official charge was disturbing the peace. Oh, funny. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you have to do any time or anything over it? I other think than I, those couple of days? I think I did have like a... Uh, yeah, I, I was on probation. Okay, parole is prison. I was on probation. Yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and I had a really nice uh, probation officer named Steve Roos. You might recognize that name. Funny, mm -hmm. huh? How long was that for? Like a month? A year, maybe even. A year? Yeah, it was crazy. For cussing in front of your mom? And that's why I'm such a well-adjusted individual. Jeez. Well, and also, there had to have been court fees and stuff. Didn't they end up paying those anyway? Oh, maybe. Or I paid them. I had a mm. newspaper route. Still, that's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. You, you swore in front of your mom? And it turned out so differently. Uh -huh. So I was talking to my mom and I was upset about something. I don't remember what, but my mom sort of turned to me and she's like, okay, are you actually upset at what's going on or is it some other shit? And I said, well, I think it's some other shit. And then I immediately went, <gasps> And just sobbed. Because, <laughs> you know, I didn't I didn't cuss. That wasn't a thing that I did. I think it's different when you're parroting back. <laughs> right. Oh, it totally is. But I didn't swear. And I, I had a lot of pride in the fact that I didn't swear. Uh. So the fact that I swore was, it, it sort of, um, you know, flipped my character as I knew it on its head. Which is hilarious because now f is my favorite <laughs> word. <laughs> I actually have, my favorite mug says, uh, shit f 
Damn. Ah. It's my favorite. It's so cute. And it's in like pastel colors. It's adorable. I mean, we've already broken the seal. Should we just f- say f- all the time? Yeah, <laughs> just make this a. Uh, th- we might have to switch to explicit. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you know what? Let's let's dial it back a little. And, and I was thinking that there may there may come a time, or maybe we'll do two shows. You know, where we do one. I don't think we'll ever. Do, we're never going to be the wholesome community show. Yeah, we're going to be the talk like people talk show. Right. Right. Um, cause there's, there's plenty of other choices for that mm-hmm. on broadcast television and radio. Right. Yeah. 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 We're just your buddies. We talk like your buddies, but anyway, that happens. I start sobbing, <laughs> run to my room, throw myself on my bed like a Disney princess. <laughs> and once my mom had finally stopped laughing at how ridiculous <laughs> I was being, she came down and was like, you okay, kid? It's not a big deal. Chill. And I was like, it is a big deal. I'm a sinner. Yeah, it was, it turned out fine, but I definitely was, I felt bad about what I did and it was not fun. So, you know, Carly, (laughs) for all have sinned (laughs) and fallen short of the glory of God. Right. Right. Thank goodness for amazing grace. (laughs) You could say, thank God. Thank God. Mm Mm-hmm. Thank baby Jesus, who's about to, we're about to celebrate his birthday. Yeah, that's true. A little baby Jesus birthday. What a great reminder during this season of uh, redemption. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I will In say- In a way, this has been a wonderful Christmas story. Yeah, I think so. You know, and I think both of us definitely belong to the formerly horrible people club. Yeah. You know? I call them FTPs. Yeah. Former terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've definitely done things in my life that I haven't been proud of. You know, that I don't like talking about that are very shameful. And realistically, I know that at least I recognize it and I actively try to change it and get better. And a lot of people don't. Yeah, I think that's all we can do as human beings. You know, they say it's not a mistake if you learn from it. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I learned something from it. Yeah. Like the only reason I talked to my ex again is because he went and he showed remorse he apologized. He did what he could to make amends. He's which... got a lovely redemption arc. Exactly. Exactly. And there's some things that can't be undone, but at least he recognized it and is actively trying to be better. About our podcast, what I'm observing is, I believe, a lot of people listen to our show with headphones on. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or mm-hmm. they listen to it uh, in, in the car, the car when they're commute. alone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm okay if we're that kind of show. Yeah. But what that also means is we don't get a lot of we don't get as much internet interaction mm-hmm. as we would. Right. And I'm okay with that. Well, but also, dear listener, if you do want to help us out and maybe spread our podcast to other former terrible people that you know, <laughs> yeah. maybe, you know, send them a couple links on the old Facebook or on YouTube or any other platform, because we are literally everywhere. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, mm-hmm. X, Insta, all those places. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I can't stop rubbing my hands together like a fly <laughs> just because the satin of my gloves feels so nice. How do they feel? They feel real good. Can I get some of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Know, isn't that nice? Oh, quite nice. Yeah. Do you want a little hand massage? Yeah, very nice. All right. <laughs> yeah. I'm loving that. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Let's get to the episode, shall we? One comment from two episodes ago, so we're late on this. Mm -hmm. Ryan, uh, Ryan Atwood, who I was in Twas with. the Oh! As in Twas the Night Before Christmas Mm -hmm. radio play, not on the radio, but on the stage. Mm -hmm. So hard to explain that concept. Right, yeah. But he's fantastic. He actually wrote the script for the thing. Yeah. Along with, uh, let's see, it's uh, Ryan, Terry, Tasha, and Mike who are on the board, and then... uh, just by the way, a quick plug for that. It's if you want to go to the Snake River Radio Players Facebook page, you can see. I th- I think we did one, maybe two, episode or uh, performances that we streamed. That's so cool. And there was oh my gosh, let's see here. Uh, so along with the four that I just mentioned, there was Lisa, who's fantastic, mm-hmm. Jordan, who was a nonstop Sonic onslaught. I have never heard the sound that comes out of that woman. She was good. Isn't rivaled by the greatest opera singer or a freight train. (laughs) Just amazing and intense. She knows how to project. And she's uh, the drama teacher at Thunder Ridge High School. Uh She's cooking with Kent's mom. Yeah, which, small world. Yeah, right. small town. But you know, that's sort of the beauty about Idaho Falls. Yeah. You know, like you you really do have all those funny little connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, in fact, 
one connection that I didn't realize is Jordan's younger sister is Allison, who I was in with Guys and Dolls a couple uh, or la- last year. Oh, and, yeah. Funny. So, and I didn't realize they were related. Anyway, mm-hmm. there was Jr. Connor, Nathan. Little Emmett, who was just He's fantastic. So cute. And our buddy William Talbot, who's also the world's greatest Santa Claus. Yes. So just a just a tremendously talented cast. Mm-hmm. Ryan, the writer of the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, we were talking about what's in a name when it came to the Brian Koberger judge, John Judge. Right. Who weird ended up being a judge. How funny. Apparently there's a thing called Nominative determinism. Yes, I remember you mentioning that after you read his comment. Yeah, and that little experiment with the twins sort of, I don't know if it proved it, but it certainly didn't disprove it. Yeah, or like, I i don't know if it's necessarily an experiment, was it? I, I don't think it was, Or is no. it more of a, no, the, an it, old wives' tale, kind of? No, it actually happened, and you'd think I would have looked it up by now, and I still haven't. Uh-huh. But no, it was, it was something that happened where a woman named her twins to diametrically opposed names and they lived up to them but that's so messed up as a mom kinda. can you imagine picking your favorite kid at birth yeah right yeah yeah like that's messed up dude <laughs> no i've always loved you loser face yeah why do you ask right right <laughs> like kind of like mufasa and scar kinda, like i yeah, think i think right. mufasa means something like king in afrikaans or swahili or something okay and then you know the other one's named scar scar yeah, although I think his original... Who ends original, up getting a scar. Right, right. Although I think original, like in the original story, his name means trash. Okay. Which is super messed up. Okay. But yeah, it's kind of like, okay, crappy parents out there, why are you doing this to your kids? Yeah. Ryan also said, he commented on our last episode, or was that also two episodes ago, about Condor Man. He said, Mike, I actually have... A copy, a Disney DVD copy of Condor Man. I said, you're a liar. He said, no, I'm not. And he brought it. And here it is. I I took a picture of both the front and the back. Apparently, it was only available to an exclusive Disney DVD club. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that's so cool. So Condor Man does exist. There is an official Disney version of... I'm sure it's on eBay for millions of dollars. Yeah, probably a fat sum. <laughs> yeah. So we've now talked about Condor Man for three episodes in a row. That's rad, though. I love that. <laughs> oh, and I also want to mention, so for the show, they were the Buffalo Gals. IRL, they're a four-woman group called Luminescence. They were so good. Weren't they fantastic? Yeah. Yeah. In fact, we'll end, not this show, because we have a special ending on this show for you. I think you're really going to like. But maybe a future episode will end with the Luminescence or Buffalo Gals performance of Mm -hmm. They Did God Rest You Merry Gentlemen, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, Carol of the Bells, Mm -hmm. and a couple of, oh, Silent Night, which is amazing. They did so good. And they are IFAF this week. If you're ever looking for a really talented, you know how much we've talked before about how much I love uh, quartet singing. Right, right. And they're so good. They're s- fantastic. Man, I it- couldn't even th- 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 <laughs> say the word they're that good. And I think it's a baritone mm-hmm. bass, whatever you'd call her. She blew my mind. Yeah, she's like a low alto. Yeah. And Holy guacamole, is she good? They're really fantastic. They get together every week. Wow. You know, they don't just do this around Christmas. So if you're ever looking to book a fantastic ladies quartet, Luminescence is their name, and you are IFAF this week. Yeah, crisp high five, 21 finger gun salute, chef's kiss to you. Keep it up. And also- Book them for your holiday parties. Probably probably too late to book them for your holiday parties. But, well, if you, but if you're one on of those, how late. <laughs> if you're one of those planners, yeah, 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 they do gigs. Not to be confused with Evanescence, right? So, but Luminescence might bring you to life. They yes. might wake you up inside. I think they. I mean, they woke <laughs> me up inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't like, I'm going to sound terrible. 
I wasn't expecting it to be that good. Yeah. Like, I thought it'd be good. I was like, okay, here are some, like, nice choir ladies at church or whatever. And then they opened their mouths and that fell out. And I was like, oh, okay. They're tight. <laughs> yeah. Their harmonies are tight. Yeah. I was blown back in my seat like the IMAX guy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's the Maxwell guy. Thanks. <laughs> that, Max, that You're was... You're right. I'm sorry. It's a, well, it's an old 80s ad that I remember because I'm old. <laughs> And it's a guy who's being blown back in his chair. He's got his sunglasses on, yes. the speakers in front of him. Yeah, he looks really cool <laughs> yeah. while he's doing it. Looks it looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just remember it because it was on a lot of the CDs that my mom would burn for me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and Maxwell made CDs, recordable mm-hmm. CDs. Yeah. Back when making a mixtape turned into <laughs> making a C- mix CD. Mm-hmm. Some openings and closings real quick. Yeah. Uh, it was so sad when Jill's Chicken cl- Shack closed. We were sad about that. Mm-hmm. Mike's, Little Mike's Barbecue yeah. in Idaho Falls. They're still open in Rigby. Yeah. I was so bummed about that, though, because I really wanted to try it. That's a bummer. Yeah. Um, what else closed? Oh, um, Sweeto Burrito closed. What? Yeah. Wait, I heard that that was a hoax. No, they're they're really closing. I guess there's a chicken place coming. So mm-hmm. Cold Stone isn't closed. They're just um, remodeling. Okay, good. And Honey Baked Ham isn't going to make December 11th. Jeez Louise. They're These guys got to gotta get their back. stuff together. Re- well, remember, I checked it out a couple of weeks ago and they were nowhere ready to go. Right. I was right. wondering if they were going to hit the December 11th mm-hmm. uh, grand opening date. And it doesn't look like they're going to. I can promise you it's worth the wait. It's Oh my God, so good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, you know what just opened? Huh. Hokkaido over on this side of town. Yes, Hokkaido and Ammon. Yeah. If you're looking for, like, um, it's really expensive ramen, but it's a really, it's a relatively cheap meal. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're used to paying 85 cents for a package <laughs> of ramen. Right. It's expensive ramen. Right. But it's really good. We both love that place. Oh, absolutely. Whether yeah. you're a meat or a chicken or a pork person. I think they even have vegan and, well, maybe not vegan, but definitely vegetarian options. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Ryder Park Sled Hill finally opened. I think they had a date mm-hmm. of, they wanted to open on Thanksgiving. Didn't quite make it. Like 500 yeah. people were there. I, I wondered about, I had an idea and- you know how um, Christopher Columbus didn't know if he was a genius or an idiot until he crossed the ocean? I don't know if this is a genius or an idiot thought, Carly. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it be cool to go down a sled hill in a turtle pool, a little kitty pool? I see what you're thinking. Now, that being said, I really feel like only the lid of it would be the correct shape. Because where the bottom's flat with those ridges, I don't know if I'm it talking would... about like fitting... Two or three people, maybe even four, depending on their size, four kids, mm-hmm. in a regular size kiddie pool that, you know, you buy for the 4th of July weekend oh, and, and fill kiddie- up with a hose. Sorry. Yeah. And a kiddie pool. I'm sorry. For some reason, I was uh, imagining a sandbox. You could try that, too. I think that the sandbox <laughs> would be a terrible idea. The kiddie pool, I love the idea of. I mean, I wonder if you brought a kiddie pool, if you could somehow fit it in your vehicle. To the sled hill, yeah. like, do they ban certain kinds of things you can sled down the hill with or whatever you can bring you can sled down on? I bet it's whatever you can bring because who's going to stand up there and stop you? I don't know why, but I just want to see that or yeah. try it. I'm down. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We can get a group of friends together. Right. Well, and it's probably cheaper than buying a sled. Yeah. I remember going sledding once and realizing when we got to the hill that we had nothing to sled on. Oh. You know what I did? What? I took my coat off. I stuck my legs through the armholes. Smart. <laughs> That's a good idea. I was freezing. Sure. But I got to sled once. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you know, you and I ought to buy a couple of sleds and go sledding. Yeah. I think that sounds fun. Or get a, a nice big toboggan. I bet my parents have my old toboggan that we could just borrow. That'd be hot. That'd be so fun. So I had somebody wish me a uh, hashtag Whamageddon. <laughs> The other day, and I had no idea what they meant. I had to look into it. Like the band? Yeah. Have you heard of this? Whamageddon, and I'm I'm sure most people have blown it by now. The whole concept was you go from December 1st to December 24th without hearing Wham's Last Christmas. Oh. And when you do, you have to post on social media, hashtag Whamageddon. Funny. Yeah. I mean, I... 
first of all, I blew it intentionally. Yeah. Way before December 1st. <laughs> <laughs> of course you did, you absolute fiend. <laughs> Man, I have loved listening to Christmas music this year. You know you've listened to too much Christmas music, though, when you start to make up um, alternate lyrics for Christmas oh, yeah. music. And this is um, this is something I used to do at the radio station, and then everybody else started doing it too. Oh, so you're a real trendsetter. Yeah, well, I don't know. I just I it sort of I think it helps you. It helps save your sanity. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think retail workers could benefit from doing this too. But you know, just singing alternate lyrics to Christmas songs. Yeah. Like, uh, did you want to give an example? Yeah. I'll be stoned for Christmas. <laughs> Give me all your weed. <laughs> That's cute. I like that. Or That's funny. Have a honky chonky Christmas. <laughs> it's the fat time of the year. <laughs> Something like that. That's cute. I won't tell you what I sing to Hoopty Doo and Dickory Doc, and don't forget to hang up your sock. Right. I won't tell tell you what those. Alternate lyrics. We, we won't grace your ears with that. No. <laughs> no. I mean, you don't want to end up in jail again. <laughs> no. No, I don't. Well, yeah. that's the thing about this show, though, is if you consume it, that's on you. Right. You know? You ought to know. Thank you, Alanis Morissette. <laughs> Do you have any Christmas songs you hate? Hate? Ooh, like, that's loathe. a good question. Just a Did I say question instead of question? I think I said question. I don't know. <laughs> One of these days, um, we need to get a oh. playback. Honestly, I don't like Mary Did You Know. Okay. It's just slow and not fun, and it's kind of annoying, and it's like, it's just kind of a dumb concept. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, she did know. Right. She was literally it told says by an it angel. right there in the Bible. Yeah. The whole premise of the song is n- null and void. You know, honestly, it's like when a kid does a, a project for a, a book report. Uh-huh. And he didn't read the book and miss some vital information. So, you know, he got a summary online and he kind of gets it and stuff. But it's like, um, bro, that was addressed like really early on. You didn't uh, notice that? Yeah. Yeah. It, sh- it should have been, the singer doesn't know that Mary <laughs> knew that she would someday, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> You're basically calling yourself out yeah. for asking if she knew. Yeah. Because, uh, of course, she did. Yes. The other one that's just a yawn fest for me, and I would almost call it, I want to say emotional rip. But, Ooh, um, that's but, a rough term. Okay. But won't that word get us nerfed too? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll call it an emotional assault song. Yeah. The Christmas Shoes. Oh, that one's sad. It is. And it's made up. Yeah. And these guys, new song, I think. And mm-hmm. I think they're a Christian band uh, who came out with it whenever they came, 25 years ago. Mm-hmm. All they did was think of something sad and put it in a song. Yeah. First of all, if your mom's dying in the hospital, the last thing you're going to go and do if you're a kid with no money is go to a shoe store. Right. Can you imagine a kid at a pay less Yeah. Your mom's dying? Dude, I'm not going to give you money for the shoes. I'm going to take you back to the hospital. Right. Where you can be with your dying mom. Right. Well, and also, she's in a bed. She doesn't need the shoes. It's a... If anything, get her flowers. Yeah. Or slippers. Or socks. Yeah. Christmas socks. This kid is just really bad at choosing gifts. This kid has... Very poor judgment. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's sad, though. You know, that's one of my friend's not favorite Christmas songs, but she really likes it. Let's, okay, let's come up with an equally sad premise right here on the spot. Okay, I'm down. Okay. Um, your dog is dying. Rango's dying. Oh. Like he, he got hit by a car because of the slick roads. Oh, no. How am I doing so far? That's just terrible, that's right? That's terrible. So why would you even bring it up? Much less put it in a song. And then why would I go to, let's see here. Um, I'm going to go to a Maverick for a bag of ice. I mean, I guess it could help preserve his carcass <laughs> until <laughs> I could bury it. I it's mean, just that, so to be disjointed. Fair, that is a more useful gift than those shoes were to that <laughs> mom. I'm just, 
I'm trying to think of something so Now, if you went and got him a new collar, yeah. as he's bleeding out in the road. Right. That would be an yeah. unnecessary accessory. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the kid should have done? He should have bought new shoes for his new mommy. There we go. That yeah. he was going to get. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's an orphan. I thought, Ooh, that'd be a bummer. I thought we said we were former terrible people. Ooh, I know. We're so bad. <laughs> but that's the thing. That's made up. Right. That's it's true. not real. Yeah, we're not making fun of a real kid. I have a dead mom. That's true. I didn't, well, I didn't have time to go buy her shoes. Uh huh. But um, I wouldn't have. Because that's a weird gift. Yeah. You know, and also everyone I so know. So if that's made up, then I can make something up too. Right. Well, and also everyone I know who has a dead mom makes dead mom jokes. Yes. You know, I had somebody once tell me, I can tell that you've never had anybody special. Um, pass away in your life because you say died and not pass away. And now that I've had a few important people, my sister, my mom, my mm-hmm. grandma, grandpa, mm-hmm. die now that they're dead, mm-hmm. I still say dead. Right. Here we go. It seems like the whole theme of this conversation tonight, Carl, is um, we speak at the speed of reality and don't really worry about feelings. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that we don't worry about feelings, but the fact of the matter is... When we talk to each other. Especially when we talk to each other. Yeah. 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 Because we know how the other actually feels. I can be extremely sensitive to other people. In fact, I'm more mm-hmm. sensitive to other people. Well, yeah, because you all, you and I just communicate... We understand each other so well. Yeah. And we already get where the other one's coming from. We have so much established foundation. We don't need the extra flourishes. Because we already get each other so intrinsically. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. Thank you. Well said. My mom is dead. Oh, no. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what? What if, um, the going back to the dead dog story, <laughs> yeah. what if the dog was hit by Let's Santa? Let's lighten it up a little. <laughs> Rango got run over <laughs> by a reindeer. <laughs> oh. That's another one I can't That's stand. Sad. <laughs> you know, when I was a kid, I at least liked that one. It was kind of fun, but it did always make me kind of sad. I was like, and we're so jolly about it. Like, yeah. is she okay? I don't know if we ever get confirmation that the grandma's alive at the end of the song. Oh, no. No, she's absolutely she's dead, dead. Yeah. Right? Uh-huh. That's so messed up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they made a kid's movie about that. Did they really? Yeah. It was called Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. Yeah. Although, well, I would think it would be. Yeah, but I don't think that she died in it. I think she just like lost her memory or something. Okay. Yeah. She came stumbling back on New Year's Eve. Well, no, I think they went out and found her in the snow or something, and she was like very unwell. Yeah. And also, like Santa didn't do shit. <laughs> like he did not help her. <laughs> she was probably three sheets to the wind. He looked back and went, "Oh, it's, it's probably just a speed bump." Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> At least that's how I remember it. I could. There's probably some like grandma got run over by the reindeer fanatic in the comments right now. Like that's mm-hmm. not true. Santa's the one who took her to the hospital. Oh man, listen, we've had some <laughs> real fanatics in the comments. People who were bagging on us for bagging on the Idaho statesman for their horrible logo Mm -hmm. for an article that I don't see on the internet. So did our show make them go, Ooh, they're right. Let's pull that. Probably not. But, but also realistically, a lot of our comments that we're getting, it feels a little bit like someone didn't turn on their active listening. Yeah. You know, cause it's like, if you'd actually listened and heard our point, I think you'd actually agree with us, dude. I think I need to stop replying to them. Right. Because honestly, I got the sense from one guy that he's just not all there. Yeah. And, and you know what they say. I mean, never argue with a fool mm-hmm. because people might not be able to tell the difference. Right. But I think we're going to get some comments after this episode. <laughs> Probably. If we keep it up. Before we get to what we did, our little mini Christmas vacation, I guess you could call it. Our tradition. Yeah, our Christmas tradition. We're going to tell you about uh, one of my favorites for the holidays. And I'd love to go and get some video this year. So if you want to wrangle our friend group. Yes, and I'm set so a down. date, we'll go to this. So during Halloween, and this is how it started, there's a little piece of property out in Manan. They uh, they developed really well. It's just scary and fun and spooky mm-hmm. for Halloween. It's called the Haunted River. At Christmas, they rebrand and do the Christmas River. That's cute. Yes. And there's just, you know, there's everything you would expect. You know, if you want to go see pretty lights and mm-hmm. get into the Christmas spirit, this is the place. 
So it might not make sense for Christmas to go follow the Haunted River on Facebook <laughs> or Instagram, mm-hmm. but I want to give them a plug just because... So I checked them out. Again, it was years ago. Uh-huh. And I was just blown away by all the attention to detail that they right, had. Right, right. Right, you know, uh, the horse-drawn carriage, just all that. I do. I told you at the beginning of this season, I really do want to take at least one horse-drawn carriage ride at one point. Now, wait a minute. You went to Mountain River Ranch for a different Christmas party, I not did. the murder mystery, not the great Gat- Gatsby murder mm-hmm. mystery party you went to tonight. I have many jobs. <laughs> so you, how was that? It was really fun. Now, that being said, I think that the other side of it was kind of closed. So we only did the dinner show side of it. Okay. Because there was no one over there. The lights weren't on and like... It was dark out and stuff, and I don't think they do stuff after dark. I don't know. Point is, we only did the dinner show, and it was amazing, and it was super fun. And funny thing, I recognized one of the guys doing the show part of it. Okay. His name is uh, Kenny, and he's actually part of a band that likes to play around town. They do Irish music. It's called the McMurphy Brothers. I almost forgot, but I remembered at the end. But yeah, he's super fun, nicest guy. So nice. And they just put on a great show. They did. Now, did you take a horse drawn, not a horse drawn carriage, but like a hayride type thing to that? Did my chair fall down again? Hang on. I ha- I've had a problem with my chair falling down during oh. the show. Maybe we should swap it out with our spare chair. Uh, yeah, maybe. Do yeah. we have a chair to spare? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a Seinfeld reference. Oh, okay. I'm again, done. old. You're good. <laughs> okay. So Mountain River Ranch was a cool... Oh, it was really cool. And no, we didn't take a hayride. Okay. And they actually had this really cute um, camper outside of the main venue called the Happy Camper that sold drinks. Cute. Isn't that cute? Yeah. So you could get anything from a hot chocolate to a beer. They Oh, I was going to yeah. say they had their own Mormon Starbucks, but if they had yeah. beer. <laughs> yeah, a little less, <laughs> that, little that less Mormon. Qualify, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was really fun. It was... Um, and the food was good. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. I felt I was okay. I was kind of mad at myself because I didn't finish my plate, but the food was so good and like I just couldn't eat anymore. Yeah. Oh well. It is what it is. Did they have doggy bags? No, it was also only like half a potato, but I was <laughs> I was just so invested in it because it was so have, tasty. Look, I want to say to every adult, every adult needs to hear this. I guess from another adult, Mm -hmm. you don't have to finish all the food on your plate anymore. Mm -hmm. That's a rule your parents made up because they wanted to make sure that the money they were spending on food was going to the right place. Right. Nowadays, with the obesity epidemic, I think we all know we don't have to eat these massive portions that we are sometimes served in American restaurants. Right. Well, and to be fair, it's not that I felt like I had to. It's that I really, really wanted wanted to, to. and I couldn't. (laughs) Your eyes were literally too big for your stomach. Yeah, basically. (laughs) I wanted all that food, and I just couldn't have it, and I had to give up eventually. Is it finally time to talk about my favorite part of this week? Absolutely. Okay, so I have not gotten enough chance to talk about this with my coworkers, because like no one asked me how my weekend was. (laughs) Rude guys, by the way. But anyway, uh, I was so excited to get to, you know, redo our little tradition that we do every year and go visit the Grand American in Salt Lake, do a little bit of Christmas shopping, just a smidgen, you know, and enjoy that amazing brunch that they do. Oh, it's so good. So, yeah, this is, I can't believe this is the third year we've gone. Mm-hmm. It, 21, 22, and 23, right? Mm-hmm. It really is Silver Bells Incarnate. It's Christmas time in the city, and yes, Mm -hmm. it's Salt Lake City. Right. And not to flex or floss too much, Mm -hmm. because like I'll use Hotels.com. Now it's called One Key or something, because they're doing it with a bunch of other almost failed uh, hotel websites. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, um, so like the room cost us next to nothing. Yeah, I think it costs the same as like a Motel 6 did. Let's start with the hotel. Mm-hmm. The Grand America was built, I was there actually, was built in advance of the 2002 Salt Lake City Olympics, the mm-hmm. Winter Olympics in Salt Lake, along with the freeway and a bunch of other stuff. Right. It was like a half a billion dollar hotel then. Mm-hmm. So it's like a billion dollar hotel now. It takes up an entire city block. And it's just opulent. It's beautiful. It's the tallest hotel in Salt Lake City. It's the eighth tallest building in the, on the skyline, I think. 
But um, yeah, it really is amazing. Well, and it looks a lot like that hotel from Home Alone 2 when he's in New York. Uh-huh. Yeah. Right. It's the. It really is. The reason we want to mention the trip we took is you might want to do this. It might not be for you at all. But you, you might want to do it, and here's why. It's the closest thing you're going to get to a big city Christmas experience. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, and it just makes you feel so fancy. If you want to do the valet parking, you can. We didn't. Mm-hmm. But... And, and here's the deal. You don't even have to stay there. You can just mm-hmm. go, look at these window displays. The theme this year, I believe, was winter activities. Yes. Uh huh. You can go through the lobby and do an entire circuit around. The hotel has a square courtyard in the back, mm-hmm. and the, the hotel wraps all the way around it. Mm-hmm. So these windows dis- window displays are everywhere, and the kids can go and check a little thing that to show that and I get a free cookie or something that they Aww. saw all of them or something. That's cute. This lovely giant gingerbread house toward the back. Oh, lo- I love the gingerbread house. As modeled by the lovely Carly Morgan. <laughs> Very nice. Well, and I think this one was the state the Capitol building. Yes, the state Capitol building. Right. And if you zoom in you can kind of see what it's made of. Mm-hmm. Very creative. But on, I wanted to lick it so bad. <laughs> she did. Good thing it was roped off because she was gonna. I was. I had to pull her back a little bit. Hey, it's better than the railing at the East Idaho State Fair. Did I lick it or not? <laughs> we might bring that up in a future episode. Anyway, on your way from all the window displays to the giant gingerbread house, like mm-hmm. massive, there are Christmas parties going on if yes. you happen to be there on, say, uh, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday yeah. night. So if you dress nice, maybe you can sneak in. <laughs> exactly. Now, we didn't. No. I, I didn't have the – any other year I think I would have, but I was just so tired. Mm-hmm. The uh, So we looked at the the weather, and it was, you know, sunny and 40, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday and Sunday, snow. Yeah. So we had a white-knuckle drive. And it took us an extra hour to get down there and to get home. And it was the slushy stuff where if you took a misstep or a miss – turn Mm -hmm. you'd you'd like be forced into the ruts of another Mm -hmm. car's wheels tracks yeah it was just yeah it was terrible well and there was even a guy at one point who was flipped around oh yeah there i mean how many slide offs did we see oh uh, five at least five yeah yeah Yeah. and so anyway we got to the hotel late and i was just sort of beat Mm -hmm. but um any other year i think i would have tried to crash a party right right in fact the one to crash this year was that we ran into the people, the Minky Couture Party. Right. They're the ones that make the... They're not weighted blankets. No, but they make the really soft, fluffy blankets. Yeah. They're kind of like Lola blankets. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. They were... And uh, I think the next morning they were taking everything down and I posed with the M. Right, right. (laughs) That was super fun. Yeah, so... Yeah, I was kind of bummed that we couldn't crash it because they did a Barbie theme and everything. Uh, you can fine. go to the hotel. You mm-hmm. can have a, a beverage at their coffee bar in the lobby and just mm-hmm. hang out. People watch. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, the next morning, the, um, what is it? The Laurel Brasserie and Bar <gasps> Buffet. Yes. Now, you have to make reservations. My favorite part. Sometimes 30 or even 60 days in advance. Mm-hmm. It's so popular on Sunday. I think during December, they also do it on Saturday. Yeah, they decided to expand it. But they have... I mean, look look at the desserts. Oh, it's amazing. And here's Carly with her. You can actually purchase <laughs> Macrons. Mm-hmm. Yes, I bought a couple of them because I wanted to be able to take them home. And then they have this funky little jazz band playing right. modern songs. Here's a little bit of their version of Creep by Radiohead. Uh-huh. Go ahead and sing along if you want. So the brunch is 65 bucks a person. That's spendy. Mm-hmm. But if you think about it, I've, I'll pay 50 bucks for a great meal. Right. And then another, so $15 of that was just this amazing freedom of choice. Mm-hmm. The chef was making custom omelets right there. I think they even had custom pizzas in, at another one. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then I know there's prime rib in the back. Right. Yeah. I filled up my plate twice. Mm-hmm. Oh, fantastic. man. I think I, I think I got thirds. And then, you know, all the other stuff like City Creek Mall's right there. Mm-hmm. Oh, and by the way, just a real quick I told you so. Remember me bagging on the Grand Teton Mall's marketing where they... Featured a photo of Santa. Right, in a mall that very much did not look anything like the Grand Teton Mall. Look at this ad. (laughs) Yep, there's the exact same photo used for 
the fashion place mall since Facebook knew my location. Mm-hmm. It, it was really fun to, you know how it is. Sometimes if you get away, you come back and you appreciate what you have here mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you appreciate the slower speed right. in Idaho Falls. I've joked before about how the reason 1J drivers get such a bad rap. Right. You know? Yeah, because they're, they're so used to... You know, those big, yeah. long country roads. I think Idaho Falls is to Rigby <laughs> as Salt Lake City is to Idaho Falls. You know, I'm right. sure there are plenty of people looking at our Idaho license plates going, you know, you country mm. bumpkins. <laughs> well, yeah, but I'm just saying, I think that we complain a lot more about their drivers than they do about us. <laughs> and I think for good reason. <laughs> well, that's the show. We want to leave you with, we told you we had a special treat for you. <laughs> and it might not be for everybody. We're going to nerd out here a little bit. If you don't like audiobooks, the rest of the show isn't for you. You're free to go. Mm-hmm. Not like you weren't for the last 55 minutes. Yeah, we can't stop you. <laughs> yeah, it's a free country. Or Do what you we? want. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we want to tell you about our buddy, Benny Fife. Mm-hmm. Benny Fife Audio.com. Do I have that right? Okay, yeah. So Benny Fife narrates audiobooks. He's narrated 150 of them. Wow. Yeah, including but That's not limited to. Yeah. Ebenezer, the true life story of Ebenezer Scrooge, a 17 hour extrapolation of his entire life. Wild. Yeah. He's currently working. Did you know Charles Dickens has like, he doesn't just have a Christmas story, he has four other Christmas related stories. Do you mean a Christmas carol? What did I say? A Christmas, a Christmas story, story. <laughs> is that you shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. It's been a long show. It's okay. A Christmas Carol, Cricket on the Hearth, The Haunted Man, The Chimes, and The Battle of Life. So he's narrating all these currently. Mm-hmm. He, in the spirit of Christmas giving, has so generously given us three download codes. Oh, that's cool. So don't comment. If you're on YouTube or Insta or Facebook or X uh, don't comment. I mean, do comment if you want to add a comment, but don't comment to be part of this. Right, to be a part of this contest. But basically, we'll pick the yeah, we'll pick the first three people mm-hmm. that email us. Mm-hmm. There's you can go to ifafpod.com, click the email link at the bottom, or just email us at info at ifaf.com. And you know, subject line audiobooks. Mm-hmm. And we will give you a download code, and we're gonna le- we're gonna leave you with a little sample of his narration, which I just think is fantastic. Also, can I just say on his website, he looks so spiffy. Yes, I love the jacket he chose for it. He's got a great look, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he looks like a guy who makes audiobooks. So thank- he looks so whimsical. Yeah, thank you, Benny. And if you're into audiobooks, go ahead and give this little sample a listen. We'll leave you with this. And so I shall tell you why I have summoned you here. Why I have asked for you, and specifically you, to come to my bedside before I breathe my last. I possess within this ancient frame a story that must be told. A point of fact, it is a story that has already been told, and told quite well. It is a story that inspired many, a story that touched more, a story that continues to reach out to the world and embrace all newcomers with its wondrous tale. So why must I tell you a story already told? Because it is time for the world to know the truth. Yes, the fanciful yarn that is now within the public consciousness is a lovely one. And yes, there are facets, indeed a great many, that are true to the actual events. But to understand greatness... One must deconstruct the caricature and discover the man hidden beneath. Why? Because only by recognizing that this man lived, he breathed, he loved, he had pain. Oh yes, so much pain. Just like all of us, can we look at him as an example of what we ourselves can achieve. If he is a mythical creature, an archetype, as he now exists in the public mind, transformed from miser to magnificent in a wonderful fiction. We cannot touch what he achieved. We can only look at it from afar. We can marvel at it, yes, but he remains out of reach. He should not remain so. He should be with all of us, showing us that greatness can come to any one of us at any time. It is just a matter of opening one's eyes and one's heart just as he did, just as we all can 